I've just arrived in Beverly in the East Riding of Yorkshire. The sun's glorious, but I'm a, bit, I'm a little bit late because a cow had escaped on the Westport pasture. Uh, and I'm here to see The Three Kingdoms, which is a new musical by She Productions. I'd better get a wriggle on. Um, as a female collective, I think the main point is that we are just a group of females making work. Um, we've got together, we were all on the same page in that we wanted to uh, be creative. And I think that that's the only difference, that we just happen to be women wanting to make the female voice heard. Mm -hmm. And we saw, when we sort of were setting out, we saw there were so many people, in particular females, that were talented in the area, and there aren't always as many amazing roles for women, and we set about the idea of, right, we want to write them, we want to create these stories, we want to show people that, you know, female stories are just as empowering and interesting as everyone else's stories, and we kind of set ourselves that task that we were going to try to engage as many women locally and as many people as we could to really get involved in that idea of celebrating women. Yeah, and I think that's really important as well, that we're not not, we're not trying to be men, mm -hmm. um, we're not writing roles that are for men. We think there are so many stories that need to be shared that are women's stories, mm -hmm. yeah. that, that that's what we're doing. And that the focus isn't, look, we're all women, but we just are women. I think the fact that the rehearsal room is all women um, means that we have a great time. We <laughs> have such a laugh together. We actually kept joking that we were on holiday. Yeah. <laughs> no, we know we have a job to do, but, but it's it like feels a like a holiday. But um, I have a great laugh when there are men there too, so yeah. to be honest, I think, I think it makes absolutely no difference, um, except for the fact that um, we are so supportive of each other, but I think that's who we are as individuals mm -hmm. um, and I think that can come with I think gender is irrelevant in that sense mm, I agree. it's simply the fact that women haven't had equality that means that perhaps we feel we have to shout louder but um, I think that it means the rehearsal room is the same whether it's the men in it or women in it mm -hmm. but we are definitely not a group that are catty or yeah. mm. women have that reputation don't they and I think it's wrong I think if you've been at drama school, there's, there is that like stigma around it that, well, it could be a bit bitchy or a bit catty, but it's not. I've never found that, yeah. ever. It's just women supporting women, yeah. making work for women. Um, she Fest was about that, celebrating women, mm -hmm. um, employing as many women as we can, um, but, but for everyone, the work's for everyone. Yeah, and we want to, you know, engage local audiences we want to tell local stories uh, we we wrote a musical um a couple of years ago called it's different for girls and it was based around a, a, a bunch of amazing women um which at the time were sort of teenagers in the 1960s from hull who just picked up instruments learned music formed this amazing band and traveled all around sort of germany playing the army army camps and things like that so they did such an amazing job and we thought that was such a brilliant show to kind of really launch us as a company because we thought it was so important that one, that it was a local story, two, that it was celebrating the amazing trailblazing women that were um, Mandy and the Girlfriends, and three, it was just a really exciting like um, subject we could get into and it explored the ideas of sort of in the 1960s, there was lots of sexism and there was lots of issues with, you know, a sexual assault and things like that and it was just really interesting for us to dive into that topic. And I think having Having that local connection, being able to talk to those ladies and have that kind of, we had lots of meetings with them and they made us laugh so much and, <laughs> and I just think it's so important that we told that story, saying that we're not sort of this area exclusive mm -hmm. but I think it is such a fascinating thing to make people realise that Hull, Beverly, you know, those surrounding areas, the north have such powerful yeah. stories mm -hmm. and it's not just all down south because for some reason when a lot of people have this stigma that it's all down south. And, and you have to be there not, to make work. Yeah, yeah and you, you, I mean, it's so nice to have this here and there's such a big network of people in the north who are creative and who are making yeah. theatre. And I think it's really important, you know, work often starts in London and then tours. Yeah. Well, why can't it, why can't start, it start here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then tour to London as part of as part of the tour rather yeah. than it being that's the focus and we, we have to be in London to make work. The transfer yeah. in London, yeah. Exactly. It, and it's great as well that, um, like you were saying, with taking a northern story that's based literally born and bred here with mm. these real people as well, like with It's Different for Girls, um, and taking that story elsewhere and having all these local actors and it's just, it gives it more kind of authenticity mm -hmm. as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think 
it's integral that things are new um, in terms of our writing. Um, we've, we set out from the beginning. Initially, the idea for our first play was um, we'll do a child, the, the theatre wanted a children's play. So um, I remember we sat down and we said, let's do a fairy tale. We'll take a fairy tale and we'll just do that. And then as we got together and we started having ideas, it just, we created our own story. And then I think from that moment we thought, well, we can do this. What's to stop us from just mm. making our voices heard and mm. writing our own stuff? So I think um, it's a real luxury and a real, really lucky to be able to write our own. So mm. for me, that's something that's really important, that, that it's new work. I think the idea of um, who who believes they have the right to write is an interesting one. I think um, I've always loved writing, but I think I probably felt like I wasn't a writer and therefore was I allowed to write, whether that's, whether that's growing up in the North, whether that's um, nobody said to me, give me permission, I don't know, do you need permission? Um, mm -hmm. And then I think the fact that we got together with other people and we were starting to create ideas, maybe just that idea of bouncing off someone. Mm -hmm. If two of you think you can do it and then three of you think you can yeah. do it and then that grows mm -hmm. and then you are actually creating something, then you think, well, yeah, we can do it. Okay. Yeah, I guess there's so many different forms as well. Like you don't have to sit down and be like, I'm gonna, in a, in a very formal way, write something. But like you say, it can be more organic and you can get an idea as, as a stimulus and then you might use like you were saying with um using jukebox ideas initially and kind of bouncing off that and then creating new stuff out of that it's it can mm. it can take many different forms i guess and i think that now that we've started doing it then every time you do it, it gives you a little bit more of a validation and um a permission to carry on doing it um <laughs> because I do think you perhaps don't feel you can do it if you don't have some backing behind you or yeah. um, an instant person to give it to you to say, yep, yeah, we'll publish that or we'll take that. You know, we've actually written so many things now and um, some people have suggested, you know, you could take that further, but it's that thing of who do we take it to? Where do we go? We're in the north. What, you know, where can it go next? But in if you think this is wrong, but we realised that the music had such a call to our work and we thought it was an interesting way that if you weren't necessarily clicking in with the story, music can bring you in and it yeah. can make you feel like you're in the show and you're part of it. And again, like I've said before, especially with um, It's Different for Girls, it was a jukebox musical and the band that we originally based it on only did covers. So we thought, right, we're going to put some covers in, but we're going to give them the chance to have the voice and sing original songs that they may have wanted to create, but at the time never could. So we did, wrote a lot of original songs. So it did start out that it was potentially going to be like a jukebox musical and just have a lot of covers, but then we realised they deserved their own songs. And so music was such a part of telling their story and their characters, and it was a way of accessing who they were as people through the songs. Yeah, and I think with um, our family shows, we write all of the music and um, stories ourselves. And so far it's been that the story comes first and then we get an idea for a character that maybe they need to tell their story through song. Um, and I think that especially with young people, music can really connect with them in a way that spoken language doesn't always. Mm, yeah. So I think that it's definitely an integral part mm. of our young people's work. Mm. Um, and it's, it's just really fun writing songs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, as a company, we've now um, developed into three clear strands. So we have she engages, she empowers, and she inspires, um, which is com we have community work that we do. Um, we have outreach work, workshops, and we work with adults and children. We have she inspires, which is for young people, our program that we've got arts council funding to deliver for um, four shows per year and then we also have our She Empowers which is for everyone which is our new original work um, and our next production which we're excited about <laughs> is um, an adaptation of the Spanish play The House of Bernarda Alba but it's set in a women's prison um, again we will be incorporating music into that hopefully with a Spanish feel and um, flamenco-esque ideas um, but Again, we're using it as a stimulus, so it's going to be new writing. We've got Laura Turner on board for that. So it's new work, but we're using as a stimulus this idea of being trapped within um, a prison, which translates really well into the play, which is the women trapped within the house in mourning. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and going forward with our Young People's Programme, we'd love to do you know, loads more, more shows to give children the first access to the theatre. It might be their first time they're visiting, lots of music in that to get them excited and involved. And actually, uh, we've been working with the Arts Council, we've been supported by them, and it's allowed us to sort of have um, a programme. During the programme, it involves having a, a young person working with us, and it might allow them to have their first professional experience. For example, on this production, Three Kingdoms, we've got a fabulous uh, lighting designer and stage manager called Anya and she is doing an amazing job and and also um, it's allowed us to offer um, childcare for any actors that would um, need childcare during the process during rehearsals or during shows and we think it's just really important that these things start getting built into contracts and into the way we work and it's, obviously it affects men and women but I'd say maybe women just a little bit more we just think it's really important that no one has restriction to the arts to performing to music that it should be there for everyone and that's what we're doing with engaging the community so people that haven't necessarily thought they could do it they can and with all our other projects it's just about empowering inspiring and engaging